God, I wish I had this set to like a song. Ugh. Cat wants attention. Smoke detector needs batteries. Meteor flies by. Leg cramps up. It's taken me hundreds of loops, but I have now watched every single time loop movie, TV show, and dare I say webisode that mankind has produced. And today I'm going to use everything I've learned to try and escape the loop that I'm currently stuck in. At first it seemed like there were countless different ways characters escaped their loops, but the more I watched, the more it seemed like there was really only two real categories of time loop solutions. There are going to be some minor spoilers here, so you can skip ahead when I mention something you don't want to hear about, or you can deal with it since this day is probably going to reset anyway, and you're going to forget it was ever spoiled for you. But I don't think it's going to ruin the whole story to just talk about the mechanics of the loop. So let's get into it. The two broad types of time loop solutions and testing whether I can apply the answer given to solve mine. The first solution is to escape by growing as a person, generally by having some kind of epiphany about your life and learning a lesson. Groundhog Day is the quintessential example of this. Phil's loop has no discernible cause, and he's stuck in it for decades before he finally escapes by becoming a person worthy of love, not just faking it as a shortcut to hook up with his love interest. And it only works because he's not expecting his behavior to break the loop. He's kind to others just because it's rewarding in itself. Now the question is, is that what will get me out of my time loop? I have tried so hard to be a better person in here. Tutoring kids online, donating all my money to charity, going vegan, except for eggs and milk and burgers. But in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, I hope this is the thing that gets me out of here. How can I possibly make my actions selfless? By insisting to the kids I'm tutoring that I'm getting nothing out of it? I tried that already, and it clearly just made things worse. For an example of a loop story with more transparent mechanics, there's a show called Being Erica, with a time loop episode called Wash, Rinse, Repeat, where the cause of the loop is laid out without any mystery. Erica's magical therapist, Dr. Tom, put her in a time loop to teach her the value of the here and now. So the magic guy just lets her go when he determines she's learned her lesson. No magic guy for me though, I don't think. The only magic guy I can even think of who might put me in a time loop is God, like he did in the movie Naked. In Naked, Marlon Wayans repeats just an hour, trying to get from being naked in an elevator to in church, ready for his wedding. Now this church has never ever missed a wedding, so it's implied that God always intervenes to make sure that they happen. At the end, Marlon makes it to the venue, impresses his wife and her dad, and busts the person who sabotaged him into ending up naked in an elevator in the first place. So I guess the question is, is it God teaching me a lesson here? I think it's worth converting to Christianity just in case. But how do I do that? Huh. Oh, sh nice. T hell yeah. Uh, let's go! The Thriller Repeaters is about a group of young drug addicts who eventually break their time loop by making peace with their families. So let's give that one a go. Hey, Grandma. I was just wondering if we had like any standing issues we have to settle, me and you? <laughs> no, no, I'm not gonna take that back. Is there anything easier, like anything you were in the wrong about? Okay, okay, thanks a lot. Well, I tried. In the teen sex comedy Premature, Rob spends every loop having a horribly embarrassing day, but when he finally realizes his true feelings and confesses his love to his friend Gabrielle, that's when he breaks out of the loop. That's a time loop classic, confessing your love to someone. But out here, how am I supposed to find someone to confess my love to? Of course. Listen, ever since we've met, I've been crazy about you. I love how kind you are, how sweet you are, your niceness. I love the way you laugh, and I love the way you cry. I love the way you eat tuna salad. Normally, the normal way. I love your face and your mind completely equally, exactly the same amount. Maybe your mind a little more even, actually, but still, you're so pretty. So at the end of it all, I'm sitting here and I'm asking you, will you marry me? 
Are you even listening? The Last Day of Summer is a Nickelodeon movie about a kid who makes a wish that summer would never end, and then gets knocked out and is forced to relive the last day of summer forever. Boo hoo, at least you're on Earth. He eventually gets out by talking to his crush, so I've just tried that, and outsmarting his bully, Meat, by threatening to reveal to everyone that his real name is Melvin, because that's a nerd's name. Okay, outsmarting a bully, that's easy enough. More like P.O. More like fuck you, pal. Your mug is irresponsibly big. Maybe I'm just small. You look 35, but sound 13. Well, you look like your name is Melvin. So... Nailed that one. In the TV show Daybreak, Detective Brett Hopper repeats the day until he's able to learn everything about the villain's evil plot. When he does, tomorrow finally happens, which is the day the evil plot is going down, so he heads out and puts a stop to it. I have had a lot of time in here to research evil villain plots to destroy the world, and I actually did stumble on something big. The Earth is overheating and soon will become completely unlivable, and the world's elite are actually building spaceships to escape the planet they're helping to destroy. Isn't that twisted? So let's go and do something about it. Go, here we go. Go get him. In the Hallmark original, I do, I do, I do, a bride is stuck reliving her wedding day over and over until she figures out what she really wants in life, which ends up being not getting married to her terrible fiance and getting together with his boy instead. So what do I really want in life? To spend time with the people I love, to be fulfilled by the source of my income. And twins! Two adorable twins that I can put everything into raising. There's a time loop episode of The Mindy Project titled Hot Mess Time Machine, where Mindy learns to be less self-centered and take an interest in her ex Ben's hobbies to save their relationship and break the loop. So how could I be less self-centered? By maybe not writing and starring in videos about myself? <laughs> Not happening! Russian Doll I want to tiptoe around to avoid spoiling, but basically her arc is about making peace with stuff that happened in her past. And I can make peace with my past pretty easily. Check it out. Getting pantsed at the drinking fountain in third grade was actually cool. I liked it. Is the loop still going? In the Smash Mouth music video for Then the Morning Comes, lead singer Stephen Scott Harwell repeats a day where he embarrasses himself in front of his love interest in different ways, until he's finally able to seduce her by accidentally wearing the same pajama pants to the club that she does. It's all about him not being afraid to be himself. It's a beautiful idea to be myself unapologetically, without doubting the path I'm on. Wait, when did he put on those pajama pants? We saw him wake up every day in his silk pajamas, and then he changed into dumber pajamas? Let's Make a Deal had a special Groundhog Day episode where after every commercial break, they brought the same contestant back down to play the same deal they did before, but with the deal going further each time. The contestant broke the loop by just going home, I guess, so maybe that doesn't actually fit here. Kids TV shows love time loop stories probably because they don't have to be too careful about making it all make sense, and they can just have fun with it. Like in the Angry Beavers episode, same time last week, Daggett annoys Norbert continuously for days until Norbert gets fed up and bops him into last week, giving him the chance to do it all again. He enjoys the repeated opportunities to annoy Norbert for a few weeks, but when he goes too far and spoils the end of Norbert's movie, he gets bopped back to the prehistoric era where a de-evolved giant Norbert is living in their same house. The solution to this loop is still to grow as a person, it's just that Daggett chooses instead to descend further as a person, and is punished in a new, greater way. The whole animated series, Looped, is about repeating one same day. It seemed like the time loop was caused by a box of Loopy Loop cereal, but in the end, a grand speech about growing up is what breaks it. Oh boy, I have tried the grand speech thing a lot. I figure if someone has set this up and is waiting for me to learn something, I probably have to vocally confirm I learned it so they know. But obviously I have no idea what their value system is and what they consider the correct lesson, so I've just gotta yell random shit. Life is short! I gotta make the most of it! Or life is long! I've gotta just chill out and not stress about it. God, both of those are so true. Glad I learned those.
In the Ruby Gloom episode Deja Vu Again, Ruby is in charge of the Gloomsville World's Fair and repeats the day until she successfully stops everything from going wrong. I've tried doing a perfect day, for sure. Gave the cat's attention first thing, I replaced the smoke detector batteries before it went off, chugged water and shotgun bananas so my leg didn't cramp up. It doesn't change anything. It just improves my day for no reason. The Sophia the First episode, The Birthday Wish, has a similar premise but with a different moral. Sophia has a spell cast that lets her relive her disastrous birthday party over and over until she has one truly happy birthday. After 37 tries, she gets it perfect, but it still doesn't fix the loop. The loop only ends when she learns to look on the bright side and not get too worried about the issues of the day. I have looked on the bright side plenty. Early on in my loops, like every character from every time loop story, I was having an amazing time. Initially, it's just fun knowing everything that's gonna happen. Posting a viral tweet right before the original goes up so I can accuse the person of stealing it. Tagging a celebrity in a tweet about them passing away hours before they even die. I can see why Derek Delgadio does it in, in and of itself. He's looping, by the way. That's how he knows every card everyone picked. He has had to do a lot of embarrassing shows where he's just making shit up and getting it completely wrong. Initially, I was just so excited to have all this free time. I finally got to make videos without worrying at all about how they turn out or whether people enjoy them. I made, does this mole look weird to you? 2000 funny Christian jokes for kids reaction. And what I consider my magnum opus, America, the white race, and your favorite Disney movie, they all must be eliminated. Whew. The comments on that one still keep me up at night. I learned how to break dance, like spinning on my head the whole thing. Check it out. Whew. I also did a lot of reading on some alien tech from around here and I learned how to upgrade the absolute shit out of my computer. Look at this. Good morning. Hi computer. Hey, what's the meaning of life? Pouring through millions of years of data, life conclusively does not have a purpose. The net difference between the most worthwhile possible lifespan of a sentient being and a stillborn tadpole is negligible. A fraction of a fraction of a percentage okay, of an I'm just gonna... change to its environment. Uh, yeah, sorry, that is a uh, buzzkill. I also got pretty good at playing the guitar. Check this out. Oh. <laughs> Totally forgot. I created no less than 80 podcasts, the best of which was a true crime podcast about all the times I've been scammed at the ATM, and the worst of which was a sex advice podcast called Dear Dr. Bust. It's all gotten pretty old now though. I have genuinely tried growing as a person many times these past few years or however long it's been. Fuck it, I have grown as a person. With all this time alone, why wouldn't I try and improve who I am? I've really reckoned with a lot, but it's not working. So it was all fun at the start because I figured I would be able to get out later when I wanted to, but then I started to want to and that was 500 loops ago. So I'm hoping to have more luck with the second solution. Interfering with whatever device or person or phenomenon or whatever is causing the loop. And that usually comes along with the character growing because that's just the nature of stories, but interacting with the device is the thing that breaks them out. A recent example of this one is in the Hulu original movie Boss Level and it's Hulu original device, the Osiris Spindle. Frank Grillo, whose performance made me swear he was one of those acting wrestlers, unwittingly had his DNA used to make the device loop him for the day until he can figure out the bad guy's plot and stop them. What eventually breaks the loop, as explained by the scientist behind it, is for him to enter the Osiris spindle itself. The problem with this solution is, if, like I suspect, that cloud out there is what's causing the loop, I can't enter it. I've tried, I never survive all the way there because of its space. In the Angel episode, Time Bomb, Angel and the gang use a Mutari generator to suck the power off of the demon that's been causing their loop, the demon effectively being the time loop device. So it sounds like I just need to get myself a Mutari generator. Okay, cool. Uh, freebie? No outer space anywhere on here. That is so annoying. Bezos is coming out here anyway, just bring it. In the show Hounded, Dr. Muhahaha has an actual reset button he hits at the end of every episode to reset things back to the start of the day before his evil plot was foiled. That's about as clear of a device as you can possibly get. Maybe I've been accidentally sitting on one of those? Or what if there's one under my mattress? Uh, nope. Just boogers. 
In the movie Palm Springs, when it comes time for Sarah to escape, she spends her loops studying quantum physics to learn that blowing herself up in the time loop cave at the moment the loop repeats will break her free of it. So, once, I did make an improvised explosive from household materials, just like your kids can, and I chucked it into the nebula out there, but it just sailed right through, and then Twitter all day was just, damn, who blew up Voyager 1? Are aliens real? <laughs> and it's like, yes, but... That one was me. <laughs> it should come as no surprise that sci-fi loop stories almost always use a device to explain this stuff. The Stargate SG-1 episode, Window of Opportunity, sees our sci-fi heroes stuck repeating the 10 hours leading up to their encounter with a man who's attempting to fix an ancient device so that he can travel back in time and save his wife. The man is causing the loops intentionally so that he can give himself more time to figure out how to use the device. If someone out there is causing the loop I'm in to give themselves more time to do something, I can't imagine one thing they wouldn't have had time to do. Except maybe watch The Irishman. <laughs> the Star Trek The Next Generation episode, Cause and Effect, shows the ship and its crew repeating a loop that always ends in the ship exploding. The episode actually predates Groundhog Day and differs in two ways. By having the crew not remember each loop, which forces them to figure out a way to send messages between loops to solve it, and by having time continue to pass elsewhere in the universe. Luckily, I know time isn't passing elsewhere for me because I have access to social media and the internet. You know, if the Star Trek crew just had Twitter, they would have seen posts going up on a different day than they thought they were on and figured out that something fishy was going on way sooner. But they'd also all have depression, so. In the Farscape episode, Thank God It's Friday Again, our heroes visit a planet where the workers always believe that today is the last day of the work cycle. And in the evening, they party like tomorrow is a rest day before they wake up and do it all again. A voice on a loudspeaker encourages them to work hard on the Tanit farms, saying their efforts will be noticed and rewarded. Of course, they never reach a time when they have to make good on that. The workers here are clearly not just docile, but happy. Friday is not a bad day to be repeating, especially when they love their work. But are there more important experiences of being deserved than just being happy all the time? And can you deprive someone of their freedom if it means their joy? These are the philosophical questions that Farscape is exploring. At the end, a little gremlin named Rigel sprays the villains with explosive piss because the B story was that he got explosive piss from eating the tannin root, if I didn't mention that, but I'm pretty sure I did. So could I get explosive piss somehow? Also, the team convinces the leader to stop drugging the workers with the tannin root so they can all band together against the real enemy that put their planet in such a hopeless state in the first place, but... I'm leaning towards the explosive piss right now. In the Doctor Who episode, Heaven Sent, the Doctor is stuck in a maze where a creature continuously kills and resets him. He eventually discovers an exit from the maze, but to cross through, he has to destroy a harder than diamond as Bantium barrier. He gets out by punching his way through the barrier gradually over the course of four and a half billion years. Well, it's worth a shot. Fuck! I have a door. God damn it. I realized right in the middle of the punch that I could just go out the door. Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. had a time loop episode in their last season with As I Always Have Been, showing Daisy repeat a shorter and shorter loop as the team ship gets pulled into a time vortex. She eventually discovers the solution lies in the team's robot, Enoch, whose electrochron displacement mechanism can fit perfectly in the ship's malfunctioning time drive and put things back to normal. Talk about a deus ex machina! <laughs> I deserve the pain! In Edge of Tomorrow, here's filler words so you can navigate to the YouTube player and skip ahead 20 seconds if you haven't seen it. You should see it. It's so good. Just gonna give you a little more time here. Lorem Ipsum. Okay, time's up. Tom Cruise is looping because the aliens are looping to win the war, and he got covered in one of the important aliens' blood. So the actual solution to the loop is to have the alien blood in your system removed via blood transfusion, but unlike the rest of these stories, they don't really want to end it until they manage to defeat the aliens. It's a huge advantage. I mean, it's like, imagine if you had unlimited lives in my favorite game, Croc, Legend of the Gabos. I've had time to play every game. It's the best one. In an episode of The Outer Limits, called Deja Vu, the time loop starts thanks to a failed wormhole experiment, which is secretly a weapons test for the evil Colonel Glade. Our hero outsmarts him, ending the loop and disappearing the Colonel in the device's explosion. Then he wonders aloud where the Colonel ended up. 
But the viewer learns his fate at the end of the episode. The Colonel is living the moment he blew up over and over and over again, screaming the exact same way and doing the exact same thing with his arms, which shows that he's not even aware he's looping. This is just his life now. His scream will haunt me for as long as I live. That chilling moment wears its inspiration on its sleeve, clearly lifted from What Goes Around Comes Around, an episode of the Mask animated series that aired several years earlier. Amelia Kronos first traps the mask in a time loop using your standard time loop device, and his solution is to get the device off himself, change the loop to just a couple seconds, slap it on her, and drop a grandfather clock on her face. She ends up getting smashed in the face with a grandfather clock repeatedly for what she later reveals to be a thousand years before she escapes. As annoying as this loop is, at least I'm not getting continuously crushed by a grandfather clock. That only happened the once, and I have no recollection of how. The Sweet Life on Deck's International Dateline episode had Cody stuck in a time loop because of lightning striking the ship at the exact moment it crosses the International Dateline, and the loop is solved when Cody manages to slow down the ship so it crosses the International Dateline at a different time, and lightning just doesn't strike it. I don't know why I even watched that one. It didn't help me at all. The International Dateline is made up. In Xena Warrior Princess has been there, done that, Xena eventually learns that the loop causing event happens first thing in the morning, so she decides to leap out of bed immediately and throw her chakram across town to reach the event and break the loop. I actually just tried that one today, but I don't know, I'm so groggy in the morning. Now it's not relevant to me, but there is one more type of solution, which I call Solution 1.5 because it's a blend of the main two. It's the one where they kill the killer. I call it a combination of the two because finding out who the killer is is kind of a character epiphany, and then killing the killer to get free of the loop is basically destroying a device, if you don't mind me reducing a human being to that. Like in Happy Death Day, our hero Tree is killed every day for weeks before finally discovering her true killer and killing them. There's. That's a, now there's another type of tree that's continuously getting smoked. Weed is an epidemic. <laughs> there are several other movies in this category, like Haunter and Camp Days, but I haven't been getting killed every day, so not much I can learn from them. Another possibility, though, is that the loop I'm in is a simulation. Time loops can be a computer simulation, like Source Code, where Coulter Stevens is forced to relive an eight-minute loop to find the person who hit a bomb on his train. He breaks out of the loop by stopping the bomber and convincing the people running the simulation to not reset him again. So one, probably not my deal, and two, if pleading with someone to stop resetting me was all it took, I would be long gone by now. I have spent like a dozen loops only begging. Or they can be a training exercise, like in Totally Spies time loop episode, Deja Cruise, set on a ship full of paid actors that break character and applaud as soon as the group learns their lesson. The lesson for them was that they shouldn't be afraid to ask for help. Kind of a weird lesson for spies to learn, I think, because their whole thing is discretion, but whatever. So, we've gone over what seems like every solution there is to a time loop. All we have left are stories where the characters never end up escaping the loop they're in. For instance, in the follow-up to Groundhog Day, the 2020 Jeep Groundhog Day Super Bowl ad, Bill Murray reprises his role as Phil Connors but is never shown escaping the loop. And that's okay, because he has so much fun driving his Jeep around with the Groundhog, his friend from the movie. He can't wait to get out of bed every day and go drive that sweet Jeep around. This is the first commercial Bill Murray has ever done, and he said it's the last one he'll ever do. Probably just because his bank account is now full. In the Annoying Orange's parody short, Ground Beef Day, every time the orange annoys someone, he's sent back to the start of the day. But he can't resist making bad jokes, and he never escapes it. There's nothing to say about this, no actionable ideas, no good reason to include it at all, but... I watched an episode of the Annoying Orange, and that... can't have been for nothing. In horror, we have a time loop episode of the Twilight Zone reboot titled Try Try. In it, our focal character is a woman who the looper is obsessed with, spending his repeating days trying to win her heart. I like this version of what so many time loop stories do. Have the time loop guy take the opportunity to steal a kiss from someone he's got a crush on. Whether that's lying about being in the same high school class with her in Groundhog Day, or quitting your job so it's not against the rules to land a non-consensual smooch on your coworker in Stargate, time loop guys love to do this, and it's as creepy as is finally depicted here. 
Horror time loops typically end without an escape, much more so than other genres. It's a good eerie place to leave the viewer. Open graves, salvage, triangle, 50 first dates, they all leave us with the characters stuck forever in their loop, doomed to repeat the hellish events we've just witnessed for all of eternity. Repeating the same nightmare forever is a pretty common and compelling idea of what hell could be like. We have the Twilight Zone episode Judgment Night. Set in 1942, a man frantically tries to convince the crew of a passenger ship that they're about to be sunk by a German U-boat. We eventually learned the man was actually the captain of that U-boat, and he's now doomed to experience what those people did over and over for all of time. That's gotta be what's going on when I play Siege. I must have dominated these guys in a previous life, and now I'm experiencing the very ponage I put them through. In Xena, the Elysian Fields are actually more of a heaven, or at least they're for people who led good lives. The dead have their negative memories taken away, and live through a day where they believe they're about to be reunited with their loved ones, but it repeats forever without them realizing. Like that Farscape world, it sounds oddly chill. I know I'd be happier if I wasn't aware this was happening. In the show Preacher, and sometimes in the show Lucifer, they show a vision of hell that has lost souls reliving the worst day of their lives over and over forever. This isn't the worst day of my life, though. Is it? At least it wasn't until I started looping. Hmm. I used to be a sucker for time loop stories. It's such a heady concept. It's almost like confronting immortality, but also the element of having no consequences. It was fun to imagine what I would do on a day like that with all the time in the world. But I have to admit, I always pictured being on Earth for it, not stranded in my house with no one for thousands of miles around. But guess what? That gaseous cloud in space that ruined my life isn't the only nebula I'll be talking about today. That's right. I'm truly proud to say I'm one of these guys now. Nebula is a streaming service built by a good 90% of my favorite YouTube creators. H-Bomber Guy, Maggie Mate Fish, Philosophy Tube, and so many more, it is absolutely humbling company for me to be in. Nebula is a place where you can watch all of our videos completely ad-free, so if you're mad because you think I sold out, just watch my stuff on Nebula and you'll forget that I ever did. And now we're partnering up with Curiosity Stream because Curiosity Stream is a fellow streaming service that smart people will also get a lot out of. Curiosity Stream has thousands of documentaries and non-fiction pieces, including travel and nature shows like Bucket List Australia, which I love to watch and pretend I'm not trapped in my house forever. And now if you head to curiositystream.com slash Leo Vader, you'll not only get 26% off of a year subscription to Curiosity Stream, you will get free, complete access to Nebula for as long as you keep your subscription, indefinitely. Giving this deal a try is a great way to support me and the channel directly, and today's just gonna reset anyway, so you may as well throw it $15. Once you sign up for Curiosity Stream with my link in the description, you'll get an invite to Nebula through your email, and just like that, you'll have access to not only ad-free videos, but tons of Nebula originals like Better Elevation, where a variety of creators walk through simple, behind-the-scenes tricks they've learned to improve how they make their videos, including low-spec gamers' take on color correction that was simple enough that even I understood it. Look, I have done this ad in every video I've made in every loop in here, and let me tell you, you usually buy it and love it. <laughs> Is this my fate? Doomed to read ads for eternity but never get paid out? Since time loops feel pretty safe for the viewer, with death having no consequences anymore, a lot of stories introduce some kind of ticking clock to add a sense of urgency. Russian Doll has reality bend in unnatural ways, Happy Death Day has some of Tree's injuries persist between loops, and The Outer Limits and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. had the loops get shorter every time. I haven't noticed anything like that yet. It's the same old loop every day. Any change at all at this point would be completely welcome. The only change I ever get is sometimes I wake up on the couch or the floor, which is just me sleepwalking. Right? Hey computer, are there any theories for a time loop that allow for the looper starting in different places sometimes? There are 4,837 recorded theories for this phenomenon. Is one the most likely? One theory posits that time loop phenomena can be explained by interdimensional travel. Like each day the looper is sent to a different dimension? More so that your consciousness travels to a different body in an adjacent dimension each night. The loop source would use changes in your brain activity during sleep to slip your mind between dimensions to another version of you, who is in this place on this day. Does that Leo get his mind back afterwards? Most likely. Okay, so if that's what I'm dealing with, how would I escape it? 
by separating yourself from the anomaly. But what if that's not an option? Can I run out of days? What if there are no more Leos in no more dimensions who ever spent any time here? The multiverse is still regarded only as a theory, but in most iterations, the number of dimensions is unquantifiable and innumerable. Wow. Innumerable, big word. So impressed. Hello, hello, all you sex-having shitheads out there. Welcome to the very first episode of Dear Dr. Bust with your host, Dr. Bust. Before we get into our first caller today, let's hear from our sponsor. Prick havers, has your downstairs area become unmanageable? Overdue to tighten up the look of your private parts? Is the amount of hair in the mix just absolutely bananas? Well, the fine folks at the Guard Men are, what? Are offering our listeners 20% off the new Nimbust 3000 for those looking to trim up their junk. You can still nick your private parts with it, like a regular trimmer, but you'll feel like it must be your fault, because why would they sell a groin trimmer that could still easily cut your nuts? Use code DRBUST at checkout. Thanks, Guard Manor. Now, before we get to our first caller, we just need to hear from our second sponsor of 30. You'll be sure to drive your partner wild with the summer 2021 lineup of products from the Naughty Little Pig Freak. The Naughty Little Pig Freak now offers chewable DBD tablets, a legal supplement derived from ecstasy. The only difference is, instead of the sexual thrills unlike anything you've ever experienced in your life, you'll just feel a little tired. The Naughty Little Pig Freak products come in discreet packaging, so no matter what you order, the box is always in the shape of a dildo. 